Hello guys and welcome to another video in the Software Engineer to Applied Scientist Transition Series. As discussed in the last video, I have prepared a small demo explaining how to train a machine learning model. In this, mo in this demo, I am not using any fancy libraries and only using basic libraries like NumPy and Pandas to train a linear regression model from scratch. For this demo, I have chosen to create a machine learning model which calculates the BMI of a person. The data is extracted from Kaggle.com. The data set contains several features related to different people. The features include age, height, weight, and the BMIs of different people. I don't know the exact formula for BMI calculation. So instead, I will train a machine learning model, which will create the formula for me and also calculate the BMI of any new person. Let's start with downloading the data. I have already downloaded the data to my local machine. I am reading the first few lines of the downloaded data using a PowerShell command. So we can see that the first line is the header. The columns are sex, age, height in inches, weight in pound, and the actual BMIs of the people. And the first two rows of the data file are printed here. The next step will be to import the libraries like NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib. Now we will load the data into a Pandas data frame and analyze it. Here I am loading the data into the Pandas data frame using the read CSV function. I'm also replacing the column names with friendly names. And I'm also dropping the missing rows using the drop NA function. So after creating the data frame, we can now see that data pretty clearly in a tabular format. We can see it contains information such as age, height, weight of different people, also including their actual BMIs. Now let's get an overview of the data. For this, what I'm doing is I'm calling the df.describe command in pandas. The df.describe command gives a lot of information related to the data, such as the count, the mean, the standard deviation, also the minimum and maximum value and all the quartiles of different columns. As you can see from the described results, the age falls between 18 and 35 years. The height ranges from 60 inches to 75 inches. The weight from 78 pound to 170 pound is the maximum weight. And the actual BMI ranges from 13 to 26. In total, there are around 24,950 data points. Now let's do one thing. Um, let's try to analyze this data and find out how BMI is related to height and weight of different people. So here I have plotted the data. The darker color means higher BMI. The x-axis represents the weight and the y-axis represents the height. You can go through the code to understand how I created this plot. So one thing we have observed from the plot is BMI is increasing with weight if height is kept constant. BMI is also decreasing with height if weight is kept constant. This means that a linear model might represent BMI pretty well. Before training any machine learning model, we should make sure that the distribution of the training data fits into the type of model we are using. You can do similar analysis with age also. The next step is to train a linear model to predict BMI based on age, height and weights. So that means we are assuming that BMI is a linear combination of height, weight and age. So this is the function we are trying to predict here. So the unknown variables are W1, W2, W3 and the bias. 
The next step is to split the data into training and validation data. I have used 80% of the data as training data and rest of the 20% as validation data. So here I am splitting the data and after splitting, I have around 20,000 training data points and around 5,000 validation data points. Then we'll need to randomly initialize all these weights. I'm initializing the weights from a standard normal distribution. This is generally the recommended approach in machine learning algorithms. So now that we have initialized the weights randomly, we need to normalize the input features and output BMI. Why? Because the features like weight and height have different scales. As you can see here, the age is, is having one scale, the height and weights are from different scales and BMI is also having its own scale. The training would be pretty efficient and fast if we can normalize the features. What is normalization? By normalization, I mean we'll modify the input features and output BMI to have mean 0 and standard deviation 1. After normalizing and training, we'll have to denormalize again during inferencing. So let's calculate the mean and standard deviation from the training data and normalize both the training data and the validation data using those mean and standard deviation values. As you can see after normalization, the mean of every feature is around zero and standard deviation is around one. Now let's predict BMI using the linear function that we discussed earlier. Currently we haven't trained our model yet. So W1, W2 and W3 and also bias are all initialized with random values. The predict BMI function uses those weights to return the predicted BMI. Now let's, let's see what are the predictions with the untrained model. So with uh, random initialization, the model is predicting random values which do not match the actual BMIs. And our goal is to come up with an optimum set of weights so that the prediction BMI is equal to the actual BMI. How do we train our model now? We will create a loss function. In this case, it will be the mean squared error. It will be the squared difference between the prediction BMI and actual BMI. If the difference is pretty high, that means the model predictions are incorrect. And we will penalize the model and update the weights accordingly. The calculate loss function returns the squared difference between the prediction and actual BMIs. As you can see here, the loss is around 3 with the untrained weights. The target should be to get prediction BMIs which are same as actual BMIs. That means the goal is to get zero loss. To get zero loss, we'll, we'll use an algorithm called gradient descent. So gradient descent minimizes mean squared error by updating the weights and bias based on the gradients. In this case, our BMI function is this. And our loss function is this. The next step in gradient descent will be to calculate the gradients. The gradients are nothing but the partial derivative of the weights with respect to the loss function. So using simple calculus, I have, uh, I have come up with the formula for the gradients here. And, and this is the formula to update the weights based on gradient descent. The same formula in the form of code is written here. Now let's go to the train function. The train function implements gradient descent. The train function uses the predictions and calculates the gradients. Then it updates the gradients based on the gradient descent formula that we discussed above. We will run the train function multiple times and slowly and incrementally update the model weights. Before starting to train the model, let us first see what are the values predicted in the validation set so that we can compare the values after training. 
as we can see here the BMIs and the predicted BMIs do not match. Now let's go ahead and train the model. I'm calling the train function here 300 times and updating the weights in every call using gradient descent. I'm also using a hyperparameter called learning rate and assign the value 0.01. As we can see, the model has started to train and the loss is decreasing with every step. The model has finished training. We can see that the model has converged pretty well and the loss is almost zero. After training, we can see the final updated values of W1, W2, W3 and bias. If we recall W1, which is actually the coefficient of height and W2 is coefficient of weight and W3 of age. As evident from the values and signs of the weights, BMI will decrease with height and increase with weight. Also, BMI does not seem to be dependent on age. Now that the model is trained, let's use the updated weights to calculate predictions on validation sets. As we can see, after the model is trained, the predicted BMI and actual BMI are almost same. There is actually a very small gap now between the predicted BMI and the actual BMI. That means the model is doing pretty well. Let us use the train model now to predict BMI on a custom data. In this case, I am using my own age, height and weight information to calculate my own BMI. So my age is 30, height is 60, 68 inches and weight is 157 pounds. And let's see what is my BMI. As, as calculated, my BMI is 23.8. The code for this demo is checked in to the GitHub repo of the channel and the links are provided in the description down below. With this, we will end today's demo. I hope this demo has helped you learn something new. Do not forget to like the video and share it among your friends. Also subscribe to the channel to get notified for more such educational and exciting videos in future.